The goal for the day is to get this van running and driving onto the trailer, despite the fact that it's sat it for nine years. We're gonna get it working. Let's do it. So guys, I'm here with Dan. This is Dan. We're gonna go get his first VW bus. It's been sitting for nine years in the field, as far as we know. I don't know, we're really going on almost nothing, right? It was purchased originally by his high school principal and he's been trying to buy it for a lifetime. Life, life changes. And we've only seen like four very bad cell phone pictures. Yeah. How much more do you need? Get in the car, drive a few hours. <laughs> So we just uh, we just touched base with our contact, um, and apparently the town we're going to has no cell ser service, and he doesn't really have an address. So where how are we getting there, Dan? Um, we're gonna meet him at the Dollar General. Yeah, that sounds uh, pretty typical of this situation. We're gonna meet the man at the Dollar General so he can drive us back to his place, which has no address. A delightful fellow. I hope he doesn't murder us. That would be ideal. I feel like we are going deeper and deeper into deliverance. Battle faster. I hear banjos. This isn't a banjo. We could go home empty-handed, and this and, would still be a great. And story. I want to remind you that that is an option. If we look at this car and it's not the right car, if it's just if things are wrong, we do not have to buy it. We do not have to. Don't buy, if it's not the right car for you, Dan, just don't buy it. You're it's, my mellow. I just, okay, let's, uh, let's look at this. What do you think, Dan? This is your first, your first look. The fastest color of Vanity. So this is Bordeaux red. I thought this was, I'm not sure what color I thought this was, but this is Bordeaux red. This is a really good color. Um, you said your high school principal bought it new? Yes. WC Cotton. How's the pedal? Does it have brakes? Yeah. It has brakes? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard pedal. That's amazing. Okay, okay, so we've got, uh, this is manual windows, power mirrors. That's a good combo. Cruise control. This oh, cruise so control. it has 72,000 miles on it. Okay. What do you think? You excited, Dan? I'm very excited. My fiance uh, would, would, would probably like me to work on it a little bit first, but I think we're going to camp in this this summer. You know, it has a smell to it, too. Uh, that it smells just like camp. I was going to say New Jersey. It smells just like my deer camp. Yeah, and reminds, you know, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. It's not great. It's going to need a thing of the seal. It's, it, the seal's here. It's just, yeah, yeah. Well, we got it. We'll get a new seal. This is... It's aerodynamic. <laughs> Well, that's ventilation. It's ventilation, yeah, because it gets stuffy up there. As you, yeah, it's my first time. So this caught on fire a little bit, right? Yes, that's uh, good. Light, lightly, lightly burned. That's what well, we look well, for. Look, there's some uh, original curtains. So this is the a little bit. Screen. Okay, so you have the front the curtain and the the, the, the yep the pop-in screen oh, that I just oh, taught yeah, you about. Oh, oh yeah, good! It comes rats. with that. Oh, yeah. We didn't have lunch. Yeah, look Come at on. that. That's... Anybody living in here? I hope there's a live one. Please, please have a live one. No. Ah. Oh, yeah, for sitting for nine years, there's probably been a couple. No, there, right? no. I'm, I'm certainly. I have a deer camp that looks about like this every year. I'm confident that. Was that a? Oh, I thought this was rust, but it's just. Uh... No, that's just dirt. This is unique. The paint has. It's thick, I think you know. Been a little bit of body work there, maybe. There's, it's possible. A little bondo. It's. Yeah. Is I'm, it set this right here in this orientation, or really you, thick there? I like it. Um, I mean, it looks basic when this is washed off. Oh, we're gonna get this thing shining, good. other than those spots like that. But yeah, patina. We call that patina. Tell me this, because I love the story that your uh, your uh, principal bought it new. So in, I tried to buy it off of him, uh -huh. maybe 10 or 12 years later, but he, he drove it up until uh, maybe 2005 or so, he was still driving it. Uh -huh. he, he was telling me about the, I spoke to him, I said, will you sell me that van? He said, nah, no, I'm going to keep it. And I ran into him at Lowe's about two weeks after that conversation, and I asked him about it again. And he said, well, funny thing, he said, I was uh, going to see my brother the other day in that van, and it quit running. He said, I was pumping the fuel on it. And someone came running, came running out of the library and was making the side of the bus saying, hey, you're on fire. Huh. And, well, it was luckily there was a fire extinguisher here. Tell you the chicken's in the, the car The chicken's in the van. This is a problem. What are we <laughs> su <laughs> What are we supposed to do with this? The every time, the chickens just keep coming in. This just keeps happening. 
So 20 years ago, this was painted. So we don't think it's really covering up any rust because it wasn't a very old car then, but it was a window, a little bit of fire damage and some algae. It's a good combination of moss and fire. Look at that. So guys, Michael, this is Randy. And uh, we're looking at the van and he told us in the ad that he thinks if someone showed up with a battery, it would drive on the trailer. So I showed up with all the spare parts necessary to get this engine running and drive on the trailer. You think it'll do it? I believe it will. This is going to be fun. Cool. This is going to be fun. So checking things over, we have oil. I've checked the oil. I mean, it's black. It's terrible, but it's in there. I pulled the air box because I want to pull these spark plugs, put a little bit of oil in there, turn it over by hand a few times, and then, you know. And in the meantime, this guy who's doing paperwork over there in his new office, uh, he's going to check the fuel pump and yada, 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 and do all the gross parts. And uh, yeah, how many miles are on this thing, Dan? 155. 72,000 miles. That's pretty awesome. Chicken? Chicken. I'm you ca you can't work. I'm trying to work here. Craig. He said, oh my God. What do you mean? Is it bad? Is it good? What, what did I say? That he said, to? oh my God, as soon as you looked under the car, and now you're not telling me what you saw. What do you guys think? Tell me. Come take a look. Oh, it's absolutely spotless. Cool. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to put the battery in. We're going to, so we brought a battery, charged Vanagon battery out of my red bus. Put that in there, put it on, look for fire back there and all that. Okay. Then we're going to check for voltage at the fuel pump. We're right. going to pull a fuel hose, see that we have fuel float from that pump. This pump may be no good. So we brought a pump and a filter and some hose and some gas. And then we'll do something with the gas, put some new gas in it, check for fuel back here. And then, you know, vroom, vroom. Okay, go. Okay, let's check it. Okay, should it be live? Yeah. You got 12? Up. Yeah, the, the line jump and it's, it pressures up. Good, okay. So we have a functional fuel pump. Nothing has caught on fire. It has the annoying beeping still, which is good. That's a great feature that everybody loves. Um, no one removes that at all and hits it with a hammer. What a wonderful product. What's yeah, what's this called? This is WD-40 with the easy reach flexible straw. This wow. is fantastic for getting in those spark plug holes. Oh, there we go. Oh, thank goodness. It turns. A little tight. A little tight. Work it past. Do you want a bar? No, no. We'll use the starter. But it's got, we've got oil in all the cylinders. We're gonna disconnect the fuel injectors. So the fuel injectors aren't spritzing. And we'll just use the starter to give it some Okay, contact. Good. Okay, do that again. Contact. Real healthy. Stop. Good. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Dan, we're gonna check for spark, so give me a couple of cranks. Contact. We got spark. Stop. There's some. Maybe, maybe this one should come off. Either or. Can't say I've ever seen one There's rust. nothing coming out. Right there. There's nothing coming out. Look at that. That's under the passenger I think the side. The tank is empty. Oh, there's a hole. In front of that or behind the fuel tank? There's a hole. We're through. That's a hole. I found a hole. Hey, Craig. Yeah? That should be coming out. Too. Then it's empty. Great. Blow through it. So we think it's empty. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's empty. Yep. Great. That's good news. I don't know where it all went, but. <laughs> Under the passenger side here, there's a hole like right, right here. It's super weird. For those of you guys just tuning in, this is one of those garbage nozzles that produces fuel everywhere other than where it should be. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this little bolt off the fuel rail here, and we're just gonna pressurize the system. And when there's fuel flowing back here, it's gonna squirt everywhere, making a nice fire hazard. Oh, it's I just pulled I just pulled a hose off downstream of the filter and we don't have what fuel gushing out we should probably so go ahead and give me a key on and let's just see if the fuel pumps gonna give it a shot nope see we're getting no fuel out stop okay so probably a clogged filter right so the fuel pump is blocking gas the pump is off the fuel pump is out and gas is not pouring out correct 
Okay, that's incorrect. That was very atypical. Okay, uh, put it all back together. We just didn't put enough gas in the tank. So Dan's under there, he's actually blowing into the fuel tank and we can hear his air go into the fuel tank, but he's not blowing bubbles. So we just don't have enough gas in. We only have about two gallons in. We're gonna fill it up as much as we can and then it's gonna work. We'll drive This is it. better. That's super cool. Wait, what is, this is a special hose that There's you just- There's this little unit on the end. It's brass with a little one-way valve on it. So he shook it and the marble just pumped until it got ahead. I need this. Amazon? It's from the railroad. Amazon? We're gonna find it and motors. there will be a link in the video description as to where we got this. Cool. At the bottom. Yeah, we'll go down there and find this, buy this, because this is really cool. The thing, it has a little, has a little marble in there and then you just, and then the fuel flows. That's awesome. So we have fuel flowing to the pump. Yes. Do you want to pull the hose on the other end of the pump then and see that you have fuel flowing there? Yep. Nope, stop. Oh, woo. oh, she did it. She did some squirting. We got a squirty squirt. We got a squirter. Uh, okay, give me that one more time. On. Just keep doing that until I yell. When I yell, go off. Oh, stop. Okay, there we go. Woohoo! <laughs> we had good fuel up to here, big pressure. So now we're going to start testing injectors. I expect these injectors to be stuck because they've been sitting for so long. But we're just going to try cranking on them a little bit, see if we get a little spritz. If not, we're going to do a little trick here. So go ahead and give me some cranks. Cranks. <laughs> okay, we have no injector pulse, so we're going to fix Craig, that. Craig, as I know, everything you own is Milwaukee. <laughs> so why did you bring a DeWalt battery? Great, great lead in. Good narration. So... Um, this is an 18 volt battery and I figured out a while ago you can make up a simple little harness and we can apply 18 volts straight to the injector and we'll just tap 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 it because it's a relay basically a little magnetic relay and it's been sitting a long time so we're going to just tap 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 and we're going to start hearing it click and once it's clicking that injector is going to work. Clicking. See that? Mm -hmm. See see the fuel coming out? Mm -hmm. Yeah those squirts. So that one works. Let's do the next one. Slick. Very slick. Okay, we're just gonna tap it till we get clicks. Good, we've got flow. And the reason this works is because this is 18 volts, so we're over-voltaging these a little bit, and it, it fixes them right up. It's a good trick. So, we've got contact in all of our injectors. And these ones we've even seen spray. I didn't pull those off to see them spray, but I heard the click. That should be all we need. We have good spark. We have good fuel. There's no reason why this won't run. I'm gonna leave the airflow meter off and give it a little bit of the go juice and uh, it's gonna fire right up. So whenever you're ready, Dan. Nice. Just checking and we have coolant. It's freakishly full, but uh, I got the airflow meter mocked back in place. Let's let it run for real now. Give me a key to the first position for a little bit. And now crank it up and start it. Good. That is running entirely on gasoline. It sounds like all four cylinders are running. It's revving up and down a little bit, but that's just because the idle air circuit's doing weird things. Probably some voltage issues in there, but overall, our smoke is calming down. Everything seems pretty good. She's idling pretty stably. This car's gonna drive. Got our little Milwaukee M12 later. I love this thing for giving tires. Okay, so uh, Dan, we're about to drive it for the first time, right? Yeah, when you say we, I mean, I mean you. We're all good. That's the brakes. The brakes are just, brakes are stuck. Just rock it, yep. Yep, if you stall it out, stall it out, go for it. There you go. Look at that. This is how we do it. Yeah, we don't have the fire extinguisher. Yeah, there's one there. Well, that's questionable. We're going for a spin because it's irresponsible. I can't really see uh, anything. Oh, it's covered in crap. 
No, and not out the back window. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Don't take it on the road, just stick to... We can take it on the road. No! Yeah, we got it. I don't want to have to tow it. No, no, we're fine. How are the brakes? Everything's fine. This car's been off the road for 11 years. It was last registered in 2012. Well, with an attitude like that... Yeah, it could overheat at any given time. We don't know. I'm going to take you to the town. <laughs> well, let's... Uh, then. Randy is... I feel good. Feeding our bad decisions. I feel good. We're going. How far is it, Randy? With that, he's probably right with that brake drag and it's going to my kid overheat. No, the engine. Right, yeah. the brake drag because it's put more of a strain on that engine. How far away is the tunnel? Uh, a mile, three quarters. A mile and three quarters? Then, and then a mile through the tunnel. I don't like that plan. We didn't bring any tools with us. We'll be all right. Okay. Plenty, plenty of cell service back here. No. <laughs> we didn't even put the hatch cover on. It's okay. Crack a window. Yeah, it's probably good. Yeah. It's probably reasonable. These windows work great. How are the brakes? They feel great. It's a little smushy, but they, they're not changing in, in uh, pressure. Keep your eye. How's she running? Like a like a, a brand new vehicle. You pretty happy? I'm th I'm thrilled. I'm just trying to keep my all my senses available. So to be clear, this this was last registered in 2012, and then it was parked for at least nine years. Okay, Buzzkill Jones. We got it running in what two hours, and now we're driving it on some backcountry roads in West Virginia to take it to a old rail railroad tunnel, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. This is awesome. It's a one-lane tunnel. Right. Yeah, you're good. It's one way? Yes. Well, wait. Whichever way you're going. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. 1914. Oh, this is so cool. This is the best test drive ever. We always ask. All the red lights are on on the dash. <laughs> what's, what's that? What do those mean? Uh, alternator's not working, battery's not working, oil pressure's not good, and uh, the, uh... Headlights, gotta try headlights. Uh-oh. And Can also go the, the coolant level's low. I don't know if the headlights are gonna work. Oh, or is this us in Dingus? Hey, we're in Dingus! We wanted to go to Dingus! Oh, I smell hot. Yeah, yeah, pull, it over, pull it over up here, but there's a parking lot. Pull it in the parking lot. I smell like the brake one. Yeah. Welcome to Dingus. Shut her down. Yep, shut her down. I mean, she's running it good. Hot. We're Smoke we're holding hot. we're holding coolant pressure. Right now, that's brakes, man. That smells hot. Yep. They're dragging. It's the tops, maybe. Oh yeah. Is she warm. Yeah. She's hot. Oh, there's some heat there. That's you could cook you could cook on that. Okay. That's that's questionable right we there. Show if we don't have to put off. Oh yeah, we got headlights. Well, that one doesn't work great, but we have lights. They're you don't think it was charging? No, it's not charging. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh was that, that wasn't a good shift. That was me. I was a little light on the clutch. Yeah. I can't believe the clutch works. I've never driven one of these things before. You've never even been in one of these things before. I sat in yours the other night. On jack stands. How are you feeling? Good. Like, like really good. Like, it's, I'm kind of like, it's a rush, to be honest. All the hard work, driving, weeks, you know, the, like, uncertainty. That's, that's pretty cool. I, honestly, I can't say that I would have expected this to go on a test drive. I, I, my goal was to get it on the trailer. We just drove it, like, five miles. <laughs> good. A little more. Three feet. Feather that clutch. There you go. A little more. A little more. You're going to go. Uh, so this was last registered in 2012. So it's been off the road at least nine years sitting. And uh, we got it up and running in two hours. And not just running, but like actual driving. Like on the road. It's got some moss. You got to love a good little patina. It's got some headlights that, you know, are still there. It's been painted and the paint needs to be done again. Um, but it's complete and it's been loved and it's it's gonna continue to be loved. Um, under here, under the passenger side, we do have this one very unique rust hole. Uh, never quite seen that. Um, it has wheels, it has four of them. And the roof seal's totally missing and the pop top canvas is, is extremely ruined. Inside here though, 
You know, you got your usual amenities. It's filled with uh, the mold on the ceiling and the rat poop throughout, but you know what? She's gonna clean right up. And those turds, those turds add value. Um, it's a pretty good car. It's honestly rust free. It was painted 20 years ago. So they're really not necessarily covering anything up, but there's some areas that were done, you know, poorly. And uh, it's gonna be really fun to clean it. There's a little rust spot right there. Honestly, she's got some patina. And then of course it did catch on fire and burn for a while, which is why it was mechanically totaled at one point. Um, but it's like only a little bit on fire. So I don't know, there's worse things. And honestly, we got the engine up and running. It, it drove really good. The brakes all work. They're kind of stuck on, obviously, but you know, that's that's life for you. I, I'm excited about this bus for Dan. It's gonna be a really, it's gonna be a great adventure vehicle. And the best part is, it's gonna get like 70,000 miles. You know, there's just a lot going on here. What are your guys' thoughts? Comment below. It's, it's just crazy to think we didn't even, we had no idea what the mileage is. It could have been 300,000 and we would have shown up and been like, okay, here's our 300,000 mile car. We agreed to. And in, in the opposite of that happened. And underneath is so clean, other than that one extremely weird hole. You had me way worried when you went underneath, you're like, oh my God, I panicked. Good. Because, because actually I was really sad when we were on the way here and you were like, well, just be prepared. We can just drive on home. If it's not the van, it's not the van. And just be, be ready for that. I oh. wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I wasn't ready. It's heavier than you thought it was. I'm pedaling pretty hard right now. <laughs> I told you it would be. You were all like, oh, no, she's no, got she it. Could, she's got it. No, she don't got it. <laughs> no, she don't got she it. it. 200,000 miles. She don't got it. You're giving it all she's got. That's a lot of bananas. <laughs> it's not happy. Uh, check engine light is on. Just you got to perform that check. That's good. So we've checked in there as an I engine. Got, I just got a bunch of lights on here. But you, you were saying yeah, you my, like the Timberwolf. Thing. My favorite part was. <laughs> so we were telling Craig was telling his West Virginia story about a Timberwolf. Yeah, I'm telling him about like the craziest experience I've had in West Virginia when I used to come down here to do missionary work, repairing homes. And the, how, the, the family we were working with had a timber wolf as a pet. And his response was, oh yeah, I had a timber wolf. <laughs> it, almost, it bit my face off, so I had to get rid of it. it. It like bit his face and he had to get a bunch of stitches. And it was only like, he only had it until it was what, like six weeks old or something? It was a pup. It was a pup. And he used to jump on top of his cars and howl. Get and on he, his back legs and howl. And so I asked him where he got a timber wolf. What did he say? The guy down the road. For 50 bucks. $50 gets you a baby timber wolf in West Virginia. That would be sad. Okay, so I, I mean, you're telling me everybody was going to love this, and we're here, you know, the first time we've stopped with it, and we've got another enthusiast friend who just showed up and was like, wow. We we literally hadn't even gotten, we are walking towards the restaurant. I've owned it for an hour, maybe three, and. He asked if you could buy it. Yeah, he, he was the first person to talk to me about it wanted to buy it. And I understand, but it's not for sale. I don't know if that's improving things. <laughs> it's more about the smiles per gallon. Guys, we managed to get this down to 8.6 MPGs, and this number is like golf. The lower it is, <laughs> the better you're doing. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. That's that's real. Oh, it's just uh, that's the original blue protective film on the the drain tray there. That so is that means unreal. it's they've never peeled that sticker off. Never used it. Has, you know, one of my favorite features is, is it has an alloy. It has one alloy wheel. The beautiful thing about this is it's only going to get cleaner from here. It's, it would be impractical for it to become dirtier. No, I agree. I agree. It
have oil motor works. Turn it off before it breaks. No, that's you're in real good shape. That's a that's very impressive. That is uncommon for those to work like that. I unloaded, fires right up, drives like a dream, other than all the problems. And uh, we're just cleaning it up. So you can see it obviously needs a tent and this seal needs to be put back on and there's a cracked skylight and you know, things like that. But we started uncovering some, you know, pretty common little body issues and then some very uniquely non-common ones, including this odd patch of metal with a hole in it and some lead and some quarter inch thick body filler. And you know, I mean, whatever, we know it was painted. We know it needs redone, it'll get redone. Inside here, I started cleaning it up, and it's it's looking pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, it's looking pretty good. So we're just going around and pressure washing the whole thing, and it needs it needs a lot more. Look at this! I love this. I love this patina with the paint coming off from where the fire was. I love this. This is so good. Hey, does the side window add value or no? I don't think that's supposed to be there. No, it's clearly an option. Huh? Hi, I'm Dan. Together with my beautiful fiance, Vanessa, we have captured our own understanding of what it means to be a Vanagon owner. We're the two newest members of the Pittsburgh Vanagon Club and we couldn't be happier. We've got a lot of scrubbing to do, a lot of work ahead of us. But with a community like this and a guru like Craig, I know we'll be fine.